Uh, so first, uh, thank you all for uh, coming today, and as well, thank everyone who's had the bravery and uh, the, the focus to uh, come up and present. Um, my name's uh, Harold Moore. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, diversity and my experiences working on the, uh, the, the diversity issue, uh, both as an employee, as a staffer on a major program, and just uh, as a volunteer. So today we're going to cover the following things. Uh, I'll give a little bit about myself. I'll talk about what is and why diversity. I'll talk about some of the programs that I, I, I've run or helped run or have been a part of. And then I'll talk a little bit, very, very briefly, about diversity elsewhere. Uh, and then uh, I've got just a long, rambling list of things that uh, I've learned uh, from experience that we should be focusing on. So uh, just for framing, I'll largely be talking about uh, diversity in the context of racial, gender, and sexual diversity. Um, that is not to say that I am not. Uh, um, uh, not thinking and not uh, considering um, you know, mental health issues or uh, military status or things like that, but that'll be the framework that, that I, I use, uh, just, just a point. Uh, my experiences are largely also drawn from uh, politics and campaigning, so if you, um, that, that'll be the place where I start from. And I'll repeat a lot of things that you may have heard already, uh, but I'm, and I'm also going to speak a little bit broadly, so if you want uh, more detail, come find me, let's huddle in a corner, things like that. So I'm Harold. Um, I'm from DC by way of Chicago. Um, I've spent the last 10 years or so uh, organizing and campaigning. I've worked for groups like Call to Action, which is uh, the country's largest organization of progressive Catholics. I've worked for Obama for America. I've worked for Rock the Vote. I worked for the AFL-CIO, uh, which is the Labor Union of Labor Unions. Uh, I've also worked for the New Organizing Institute, uh, which is a, uh, an organization that is now gone, now defunct, uh, that uh, trained organizers on using technology technology to win campaigns. Uh, currently, I'm a technical account manager at uh, Blue State Digital, which is a large uh, digital uh, marketing and technology firm uh, for campaigns and, uh, and nonprofits. Uh, so my story. I didn't realize that uh, the work that I was doing was actually tech. Uh, so uh, when I started uh, organizing, I was working on a political campaign uh, leading door knockers around a community. And we had taken an old voter file and through access, access built a uh, database of all of the voters in our, our ward, in our district, uh, effectively. Um, we, um, we had to rebuild that thing, what felt like every other week. And what I found in other jobs was that that qualified as tech at some point. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that um, this thing that I, I really dreaded doing every month and every year was, was actually something that people would be willing to pay for. So um, <laughs> in uh, 2012, I moved to Washington, D.C. to uh, work for the AFL-CIO. Um, I helped run their political mail program. I helped uh, build the, the list that we would uh, create to uh, run uh, the, the, the campaigns that, uh, that went out. Um, so we, we finished that cycle, uh, we elected a bunch of people, we did not elect a bunch of people as well, but we were sitting in uh, the room in the picture here, uh, having a very long discussion with a bunch of consultants and vendors and people like that, talking about what happened and what should happen in 2013 and 14, and I had a bit of an epiphany. There were only uh, two uh, black men in the room, that was myself and my friend Jama, uh, and then there were probably a scattering of about five or six women. Uh, in, in that entire group, there were about a hundred of us talking about the ways we're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars over the next two to four years uh, trying to change the world. And <clears throat> just a, a complete lack of representation of just many, many folk. Um, I, I got very disappointed. Um, I, I decided at that moment to start uh, working more professionally on uh, diversity. So. Um, what is diversity first? So uh, the quote above is a quote that I've actually heard people uh, say when I'm talking about diversity in a room. You know, uh, blondes and brunettes, dogs and cat owners, right? Um, I actually had an HR director tell me that when talking about diversity and, and how to make their company look different. Uh, so for uh, framing, let's just uh, start with a definition of diversity as a variety of people and ideas within an organization. Uh, that includes race and gender, sexual preference, age, uh, mental and physical status. That also may include socioeconomic backgrounds. 
Um, so why are people obsessed with diversity these days? Um, so there's a study in the University of Michigan that says that um, diverse groups of problem solvers can solve uh, problems more quickly than high ability problem solvers. Uh, McKenzie and Co. has uh, an article saying that from uh, eight to 10 uh, companies with more diverse uh, boards, our top financial reporters, uh, Harvard Business Review, Business Review said that uh, more diverse teams are more innovative. Um, and then, as well, um, the US Census says that by 2024, this country will no longer be majority white. It'll be majority uh, everything. Uh, or uh, there won't be a, a, dominant, uh, a, a dominant culture. Uh, and so, um, you know, different people and different uh, backgrounds are coming. Um, and the last reason for diversity is just, it's just. It's the right thing to do. Um, we want our, our, our products and our services and our goods to reflect the people who they, uh, who they will be affecting. So um, we've got companies out there that are trying to end the car industry, that are trying to put men on the moon, but they can't find and hire a, a black developer, and I think it's just ridiculous. Uh, why is that? So why uh, can't companies uh, commit themselves to diversity? Uh, the first reason is companies are weasels. Um, they either have mushy definitions of what they, they mean when they say diversity, or they have no metrics uh, or mushy metrics on those things. Um, to, uh, they say that it takes time to find folks who don't look like you, don't act like you, and retain them. Um, it also takes time to reform your office to account for differences to take effect, and that it's easy to, to bet on a sure thing. All of these things are, uh, are, are silly. You know, um, I, I, it's, none of these things are without the, the possibility of, of happening. And um, none of these things are high lifts for a company that can change the world in, in the ways that some of our, our friends, both in politics, civics, and tech, have done. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about my experiences in diversity in uh, tech and campaigning. So in 2014, I ran a program for the new organizing institute called uh, the State Training Program. So over the course of about a year, uh, we had hubs in six major cities across the U.S. where we uh, offered free one-day trainings in uh, beginners digital, uh, so Facebook, Twitter, email, things like that, and data, so uh, Excel access and uh, proprietary campaign software. Uh, we engaged about 1,500 folk. Uh, we, uh, we kept an active, active listserv. We, we're still doing pretty uh, big things with that group. Uh, and some of the folk who came out of it were really fantastic. Um, I work at Blue State Digital as a technical account uh, manager. My portfolio is the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, Emily's List, others. Um, but a really funny story, um, when I arrived, uh, I had been there for about a month, and one of the, the senior staff had heard that I had been working on uh, diversity issues in the past, and uh, they recruited me to become the de facto head of the diversity community, committee at my, at my employer. It was the worst. Um, our company is about 250 people spread across six offices, um, all with varying uh, levels of experience and, uh, and, and uh, interest in diversity. And so at a time when I had no political uh, capital and no real idea what we actually did, I was now the diversity guy in our office. Oh, 10 minutes, okay. Um, and uh, lastly, um, the Kairos Fellowship. So I'm an advisor to the Kairos Di Digital Organizing Fellowship. Uh, we just finished our onboarding training last week in Oakland. Uh, we have 13 fellows in, uh, in national organizations like the Daily Coast, Mozilla, others, uh, who are, uh, who we gave them the edict to more or less just go and fuck things up, um, to run really good campaigns that include uh, more folk than ever. Uh, and um, yeah, and, and so far, so good. Um, some of the things that I've learned uh, in these experiences, um, I'm just going to outline in a, a list of things that is not very uh, structured or, um, or um, layered or updated. Um, some of the things you can do when you're thinking about uh, diversifying your company or some of the things that I've learned are, one, do everything that Alter Conference does. Um, bring folk in. Uh, acknowledge their needs. Um, you know, make really strong relationships with great companies, provide pathways for people to tell their stories. Uh, two, pay people for work and create opportunities to pay, uh, be paid and keep money in a diverse family. So uh, pay queer folk, pay black folk, 
pay Latino folk for work that they do and for labor that they produce. Uh, three, acquire and expand political capital. So as you rise up ladders in your organizations, uh, make sure to use the voice that you have that you've gained in order to, uh, uh, to advocate for others who, who may not have that ability. Uh, four, build authentic relationships in two-way streets. So um, what's about to happen over the next 10 years or so is about uh, about half a billion dollars to a billion dollars will be spent uh, trying to uh, make uh, companies that are largely white uh, look more like the rest of the country. Um, don't let these companies drop a bunch of money on you and then disappear. Force them to change their own standards. Force them to change their own organizations. Um, don't ask people to be the wrench or the token. Don't ask people to fix your organization. Uh, it, no one wants to be Rosa Parks or Jackie Robinson. Uh, allow folk to just do their job without uh, feeling the weight of their entire race or sexual orientation on their back. Um, any CEO who can't uh, cite their organization's diversity efforts isn't serious. So if your CEO does not know what you're doing to make your organization a better place to work, um, they're not very serious about it. Don't let directors of diversity and inclusion have all the fun. Um, training programs should build your portfolio and create bridges and hopefully create a pathway for you to, uh, to work. Uh, recognize that the sun shines in Philadelphia and Chicago and Tulsa and places outside of New York, DC, and uh, San Francisco. Um, don't just focus on diversity, but also the inclusion part. So uh, it's very important that you know uh, that people are retained and that their their personal needs are met, and that we talk about mentorship and we talk about uh, taking people as they are throughout their life cycle in a company. Um, if there are no numbers, there's no tracking. Uh, acknowledge complementary skills. So um, I don't. Uh, make the claim to be a technical person or a coder. I, I, I mostly say that I'm tech adjacent. <laughs> um, I stand next to uh, very, very technical people. And that there's a ladder of engagement, that uh, some people can start from the help desk and then wind up in IT. Uh, some people can uh, start from being uh, you know, any number of careers and wind up in UX, that, that there's uh, places for these things to happen. Embrace the weird, the janky, and the uncomfortable, because there's going to be a lot of it. Uh, and if you want to go fast, you should go alone. But if you want to go far, you should go together. So uh, it's really important that we all work on slowing down a little bit so that we can acknowledge one another's needs and, and push things forward. And lastly, focus on uh, solving uh, common problems and our problems. So um, many of the programs that I've been a part of are uh, either shooting for diversity for diversity's sake or shooting to be the next Google. And there's a happy medium in there uh, on the ways that we can, we can solve our issues. Uh, so, very briefly, because I'm running out of time, uh, so diversity in other industries. Um, so, uh, there's the Rooney Rule in football. It says uh, for every head coaching vacancy or every GM vacancy, you have to interview one black, uh, or excuse me, one minority uh, candidate. Um, this was uh, formed by the former owner of the, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, Art Rooney. Um, uh, so far, it's had very mixed results. Uh, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, same thing with uh, diversity in uh, cable. You know, there's no real silver bullet. They've been fighting for uh, more diversity of late night hosts, for more diversity of cable uh, news anchors, for many others, for about 30 years. There's going to be some things that uh, that work really well, some things that don't. So we're very lucky um, in our industry, in uh, politics and civics and campaigning and tech and those spaces, that it's a bit the Wild West. You know, degrees are helpful, but they're not the end-all, be-all. That uh, there are many secondary uh, options for credentialing. So there's, you know, Amazon University. There's a strong GitHub. There's all these things. Uh, there's uh, a thousand coding schools these days. Uh, and that tech is only skills built from scientific knowledge. So um, that there's no end-all, be-all. There's no law degree that you need. There's there's just a, a willingness to take data that you have and turn it into a product that you need. Uh, and that there are needs everywhere and we're close to people who have them. So uh, the last thing I'll wrap up with is just a few examples of folk who, um, who took opportunities that no one else was filling and filled them. Um, I'll, I'll start with uh, just talking a little bit about FUBU. So ultimately, what this is all about is building things for ourselves by ourselves. 
acknowledging our own needs and, and reaching out to them. So we've heard a couple good examples about that today with uh, the Stay Woke bot, uh, with uh, other pieces of software written uh, especially for us. Uh, the story of FUBU is FUBU is a clothing uh, label uh, that was popular in the, the mid to late 90s. Um, and it was started by this group of uh, got, uh, folk in the corner uh, who wanted to see themselves represented and wanted to uh, create an emotional uh, energy around uh, a brand. Um, they eventually wound up going bankrupt, but the, the overall lesson was pretty cool that, hey, if we create something that is for us and that's something that is by us, that people will emotionally attach themselves to it and that we can solve a, a long-term problem. Um, another example of that is Pigeonly. So uh, Pigeonly is uh, a VoIP uh, piece of software that uh, enables prisoners to call their families more cheaply. Uh, it's one of the coolest pieces of software that I've seen. It's made by a former, uh, a former uh, prisoner who uh, came out of jail and realized that his family is spending, you know, untold sums of money to call back every week. Um, and it reduces the cost of a call from uh, $70 for 300 minutes to about $20 for the same amount of time. They're doing about 200 minutes a month, uh, 2 million minutes a month, excuse me. Another example is NeuroCode. Um, so uh, they're an Atlanta-based uh, coding collective. Uh, their clients include the AARP, Sprite, Trapflix, and DreamWorks. So they, uh, they're a really good example of doing things for themselves and by themselves. They all had uh, very corporate jobs, wound up quitting them, and uh, started their own thing based on the relationships that they already had. Um, and then M Relief, which is one of my, uh, which is one of the coolest um, examples of doing things for yourself and by yourself that I've seen recently. So it was founded, and what it is is a set, an SMS program that allows you to determine your eligibility for uh, government aid. So um, I've had to collect unemployment at one time in my life. Uh, I've had to go in for other government aid at other points in my life. Every time I walk into a government office, it's a special kind of hell. Uh, and so to have the ability to walk in and out of a place knowing that I'm eligible uh, just it makes a very stressful time in your life a lot less stressful. Uh, so with that, I, I think that I've got like two minutes left. Um, and I, I just want to thank you all for uh, indulging me for the last 20. Um, if there's time, uh, there's questions as well. If you want to uh, just chat, or if you want to pay me money to do things around advocacy or uh, tech or things like that, uh, you can contact me in any of these places. Thank you. <laughs>